All right, so for this segment of the tutorials, we're going to be uh, continuing on creating our time tracking app. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually create our core data models. So we're gonna go over to the core data model page and it should look like this and we're gonna create a couple different entities. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new entity. I'm gonna call it clock underscore CD. And this is gonna be our core data version of the clocks. I'm gonna have um, first one is going to be a string and I'm gonna call it color. The second attribute inside of this is going to be, oh, you know what, that was an accident. Let's get rid of that. Um, there we go, inside a clock. So first one is gonna be color. The next one is going to be ID. And the next one is gonna be name. Uh, name is gonna be a string. ID will be a UUID. And color will be a string, and you'll see why soon. Um, and then from there, I'm going to create a second one, so a new entity, and this will be a time segment. Time segment underscore CD. Okay, and for attributes, we're also going to have an ID. I forgot. So ID. Okay, and that one is going to be a UUID. And then we're also going to have, um, right here, we're going to have associated clock that would be a UUID then I'm gonna have um, end time and that will be uh, that'll be a date actually sorry and then the last one will be start time and that'll be also a date okay and that'll be that for the attributes for our uh, essentially we just created our core data models so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to extensions and we're gonna add a few different things in here. And I, like I, as per usual, I create a lot of this stuff in advance so we can kind of talk about it as we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an extension, to an extension of the clock underscore CD class, uh, which is what we just created in the core data model. So cannot find, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this project really quick and reopen it. Okay, and so you'll see that if I come here and I say uh, recent and just open that right back up. Okay, now if I try to reference the clock underscore CD extension, clock underscore CD, there we go. Okay, and inside of that, I want to create a new funk and the funk is gonna, well, first actually, yeah, first thing we need to do is we need to create a funk called uh, to regular segment, okay? And it should return an optional time segment. The non, or sorry, this is um, the clock. So it should return an, uh, a regular clock, okay? So this one's gonna be called to regular clock. And we're gonna just put a conditional and we'll say if let id equals self.id, we're essentially unwrapping all the attributes of the uh, core data object and let name equal self.name and let color equal self.color. If we can do all of those unwrapping, then we'll just return a clock with all those pieces. So ID name color. Else, then else we'll return ourselves first we'll do a print um, we're going to come here and say print and we're going to print error and we're going to return a uh, clock and that'll be um, we'll get rid of the ID we don't need that we'll just come here and name it error okay and for color, we're gonna come back to this because what we're gonna do really quickly is we're gonna go over to the universals section and we're gonna add some stuff to the universals and then we'll come back to that extensions. So inside universals, I'm gonna add something called, I'm gonna add an enum here and I'm gonna call it clock colors, okay? And it's gonna be a string and it's gonna also conform to a case iterable. And I'm gonna copy paste this next part and talk about what it is, okay? So, what I'm going to have, I'm gonna paste that 
And what you'll see is I created, you can ignore this piece at the bottom here for a second. I created a, uh, an enum where the return, it's, they're all strings, the raw value is strings. I wanted the raw value to be colors, but I can't create an enum where the actual raw values are colors. So uh, instead what I did is I created an, uh, a variable called instance inside of the enum that I can reference anytime I have. So if I had like clock colors dot gen one underscore one, uh, and then I said dot instance, it would return a color. So we're getting this error because I have an extension that we're gonna add. So what you, what you can do here is, I want you to come up with your own set of colors. So I picked five colors here, and I picked five colors here. Um, and then I assigned them to hex colors, okay? So uh, you can either find colors in the RGB form or you can find hex values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the extensions once more. So I'll actually leave this open so you can kind of see the format for it. Okay, and you'll understand why we have to do this momentarily. So I'll save it. And then I'll go over to extensions again. And I need to add it to the extensions. I'm gonna to have to add an extension to the color protocol. And what that extension will be, I'm gonna copy paste it, is it'll allow us to initialize colors using uh, hex. So you'll be able to initialize with a hex string and it'll parse it all out. So just make sure yours looks like this, okay? Uh, you can pause and you can just kind of write this back out. All right, and then you can initialize colors using a hex string. You could also just initialize colors uh, using, you know, like instead of doing it via the hex method, I did the hex method because it's easier. You could also just make this say something like this, you know, instead of saying gen, the return value for gen one, underscore one, you say it'd be color, uh, we can even say like dot red or something like that. You know, you could do something like that. You could assign it to actual colors, you know, dot blue. I just like to do the hex version because I can do custom colors that way. Okay, so that gets rid of that error. So let's go back over to the uh, extension side again. So let's keep going over. This error won't go away until we modify the classes page and you'll see what we're gonna do when we do that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this the uh, well, next thing I'm going to write really quickly actually is I'm going to say just clock colors dot gen one underscore one. So the whole reason we have this whole mix up of colors uh, and we're using something called clock color instead of color and we're using strings instead of actual colors is because we can't store colors inside of core data. And if so, you'll notice that that's not a type option. So we have to find some way to store our colors in core data. And we're gonna do that essentially by uh, taking colors, uh, assigning them to, we're, doing, we're managing it by assigning those colors to in, or the different cases of this enum. So that way we can kind of go back and forth and instead of storing the color in core data, we can store the string that represents the color and go back and forth between them. Okay, so that's kind of why we have to do this weird uh, loop around. So these errors will go away, but it'll be a minute. So that's it for that extension, okay? The next extension we're gonna do uh, is gonna look really similar. I'm gonna copy and paste it just for the sake of time. And you guys can uh, do, you can just pause and look at it. So it's the same general principle, right? So I called it to regular segments. We're gonna unwrap all the attributes from the core data model, right? So if let ID equal ID, start time equal start time, end time equal end time. Um, and then uh, if it works, then if we're able to unwrap all of those optionals, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say return time segment with those values. Otherwise, we'll get an error and it'll have a bunch of random default values. And we'll actually go ahead and we could do this. We could do the same exact thing. This, all these printings for you, you know, you can set up the same thing to print up there. Uh, maybe the ID and the name, the color, so you can figure out where you messed up. Um, so that'll be that, okay? And that's, now we have two of our extensions done. We have two more extensions to go, okay? The next extension, okay, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be an array. We're gonna extend the array where elements are equal to clock CD, and we want to essentially, if we want to take a whole array of clock underscore CD, so the core data version of clocks, and convert all of those to the normal version of clocks, then we're going to have a function called two regular clocks, and it's literally just gonna run through. Um, it's just gonna run through each of the uh, each of the clocks inside the array of clock underscore CD and return the two regular clock version of it, okay? 
Um, and then that the only thing it doesn't like here is we need to get rid of this optional. That's what it does not like. Okay, and then the last piece is gonna pretty much be the same thing for the uh, time segment. So we're going to be, um, it's actually pretty much identical. So here, you'll see that we have an extension of an array where the elements are equal to time segment underscore CD. Okay, and we're gonna have a function called two regular segments where we'll return an array, uh, an optional array of time segments. Okay, and so you can just make sure that yours looks like that. So all the extensions that you should, this, this page, you already had these two, okay? And now you should have a total of five new extensions. You should have this one, the extension of clock underscore CD, the extension of time segment underscore CD, the extension of the array where the elements are equal to time segment CD, and the extension of the array where the elements are equal to clock underscore CD. And lastly, the extension for color if you're interested in initializing color, colors using hex. Okay, so that takes care of modifying the extension page. Now, we're moving our way back to the universal page. Uh, the only thing we actually had to do on this universalist page was to add uh, these colors. So you can, like I said, you can create your own set of colors. And these are gonna be, the, what are these colors? Well, these colors are going to be the only colors you're giving your uh, users the option of picking, okay? Um, their clocks will only be able to be whatever colors you choose to designate here. Okay, so I just picked, you know, some colors that I liked and I used, did it via the Adobe color picking website. So you can type in like color or color create Adobe and you'd find it on the internet. So that's that for that. Now let's move over to the classes. Okay. And inside classes, we need to make a few changes. Okay. So color here is now going to be a clock un or clock colors object. Okay. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it here because we're no longer going to be dealing with just straight up colors. Okay. And that should take care of that. And so now we'll keep going down into the time segment. Nothing changed there. Inside of global environment, we're gonna make some changes, okay? So um, we no longer really need to have our, uh, our, our list of default clocks because our whole goal is we want to start out with no clocks and the user can add clocks and we'll save those clocks. You know, the whole point of having default ones was kind of for our sake of learning and creating. But what we should do is we should just come here and clear that out. Let's get rid of these. We don't want these anymore. Okay. So uh, we'll save that. And then I'm going to actually create something here. I'm going to create a new enum. And we're going to call it pages. Okay. And this is what we're going to use to navigate. So we're going to say case. And we're going to create three cases. Okay. Dashboard, more, and history. Okay, that's gonna let us kind of go between our more page, our history, where we can look at all the different segments you might have logged, and our dashboard, which kind of tells us a little bit about our day and what we've done so far. And then I'm going to create a few things underneath here. We're gonna have uh, published, and that publish is going to be a var called location, and it's gonna be of type pages, and it's gonna have a default value of dashboard, meaning that we want to start out on the dashboard. And I'm going to create a new segment also called, or a new, um, sorry, variable called all segments. And it's going to be an array of time segments with a default value of nothing. Okay. And we'll do a few more changes. We're going to scroll down. And in the inactivate clock, we're going to be getting rid of this right here because we're gonna actually do this manually outside of the inactivate clock function. And it has to do with how we're able to store time segments and store them in core data. Um, by placing it here, it, it won't allow us, it would have caused an error when we're trying to, um, we have a timer running and we try clicking on another timer and inherently stop the previous one and start the second one, there ends up being an issue when we put this piece right here, when we leave the active clock equal to nail, when we leave that in there. Uh, we'd run into an issue. So instead, we'll, we'll manually do it somewhere else. You'll see where we add it in a little bit. So the next thing is we're just going to create one more func here. We're going to call it load all clocks. Okay. And it's going to have a parameter of context, but we need to actually go to the top here and import core data so we can start writing core data functions. This is going to be our first core data function. And it needs to be fed in NS managed object context. Okay, and that's kind of like the, uh, the way I think about it, it's like the container where, where our core data stuff actually lies. 
Okay, I'm gonna copy paste this next piece and we'll talk about it. So, right here. And what you'll see, let me get rid of these ads. We'll talk about it as I delete them. So first we're creating our fetch request. So we're saying, uh, we're gonna fetch uh, entities by the name of clock underscore CD. And we have the do, and it's going to try, uh, first I'm gonna say let fetch equal try context.fetch. So it's trying to create the fetch uh, request. And then we're using an if let to say, uh, essentially to optionally unwrap the results. We'll say if fetch is equal to the fetch as clock CD, so we're making sure that these are clock CD objects coming back. That print is just for us, saying the clocks are loading. Then we have self.clocks is gonna be equal to fetch dot two regular clocks. So we're saying our uh, clocks array is going to be equal to, um, it's gonna be equal to the return, which should have been a clocks underscore CD array. And we're using this two regular clocks function that we created in the extensions to convert it to the proper type. And we're saying, hey, if we're not able to uh, get there, then we're gonna just print fetch failed. That's just kind of for us. Okay. And we also have catching an error uh, if we had an issue with the entire fetch process. So that is like our error handling. Okay. And that's that. Okay. We're just missing a parenthesis right there. All right. So that takes care of that. Now, the next place we need to go is over to the root. So we're gonna go up to this area here. And what we need to do here is we need to add just one little piece. We're gonna say, hey, on up here, we're gonna want to run that function. So self.environment dot load all clocks and the context we're going to be using is persistence controller dot container dot view context that's the same view con that's the same uh, context or ns manage object context that we're going to be passing into the environment to the rest of the app so that ensures that we're working in the same place for everything let's just make sure we're not missing the errors along the way yes so we'll make sure to to, to identify and address this so uh, let's actually just run it and see what happens. So we have cannot convert value of uh, string. So it doesn't like the fact that we're trying to feed uh, a string here. And it likely has to do with, let's go look at what we got going on. So go to the extensions. Oh, yes. So yeah, what it like what I what we should have actually is we should have this. We should have it say clock colors and it's trying to create the clock color from the raw value of color. And if that doesn't work, let's just default to gen one underscore one. Okay, and that should take care of that problem. Okay, and this error, frankly, I'm gonna be getting rid of this entire preview section. This is what allows us to use the, um, the previews if you're using the canvas, but we're not gonna use a canvas, so that's irrelevant. And similarly, you'll see that word item is only in this area. So what that I can actually go do now is I can go over here and get rid of this entity. We don't need that, okay? Um, so, so far, so good. The next thing we'll need to do is we're gonna go to the add new clock view, okay? And we have a few things to do in here as well. So the first thing we'll need to do inside of here is we're going to have to add the environment and we're gonna add the dot managed object context, private var view context. So what that's saying is we can now reference the environments manage object context by, by essentially using the view context. And the next thing I'll come here and I'll say is default color is actually going to be equal to clock colors dot gen one underscore one. Okay. And then this color picker, we're actually gonna get rid of it because we don't wanna use a color picker anymore because we're not able to actually 
you, if you pick a color, you're going to be left from a color picker, you're going to actually be left with a color object. And we can't store those color objects. So instead of giving the user free reign to pick colors, because of the fact that we can't store colors inside of core data, we have to essentially give them a limited range of colors they can pick from that we can flip back into a textual version, store it in core data, and then bring it back and forth. So the way we're going to do this is, I kind of wrote this in advance, is I'm going to come here underneath so, so you can understand scope. Underneath the H stack, where I had uh, the clock name text field, but above the buttons, okay, I'm going to add two H stacks. Okay, the first one is going to run through the first half of the colors that you can potentially pick from, and I'm saying, hey, for each of those, run through all the cases and run through half of those cases, so over two, and create a button where when you click it you're going to set color equal to the color that they clicked on. So clock colors dot all cases, item number i. And i, of course, is the index that we're referencing in the closure. Okay, so that's the action of the button. The actual content of the button is going to be a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 5. Okay, and it's going to have a height and width of 30, foreground color of the actual instance of that case. So that's how we can go from the enums string string component or string raw value and we can also flip it back and forth to what is the uh, the instance which is going to be the actual color associated with it and we can go back to the enum to, to, so you can understand that as well or you can rewind uh, and then of course I'm going to have an overlay and the overlay is just going to be a rounded rectangle inside I put this inside of a group um, so that way I can put the conditional inside if I just put a conditional it won't like it because then I have to have an else but if I put in a group, a group is okay with having nothing inside of it if this conditional fails. So if color dot raw value is equal to uh, clock colors dot all cases dot raw value, essentially it's saying, hey, if the color that's currently picked is equal to this color, then the round, then you can put an overlay of rounded rectangle. It's just a uh, a white outline around the color, and that's how you're gonna know which one you've selected, and then. That's the overlay. And then you don't forget about putting the dot button style, plain button style. That's how we don't have some of the default styling that comes with Mac OS buttons. And so that's the first H stack. And the second H stack is identical, except the first one is saying, oh, for each from zero to the end of the first half. The second one is saying, oh, from the end of the first half to the rest of them. So that's, how, that's essentially just saying, hey, let's split it up into, um, into a total of two rows. So I can go here. Fold that up. It, this the actual content is identical though. So, so if you want to have it open, so you can kind of make sure you have the exact same thing, you replace the color picker with everything from here to here. Okay. So you can pause and check that out. So that's that piece, and then we'll need to go all the way to the bottom here. We're going to create a function called add clock, and this. Is, well, this is going to be a core data function. So we need to come up to core data, come here to import core data. Okay? And you'll see that we're going to add a function here called add clock. And I'm going to paste it and we can talk about it. So uh, the only thing that you have to do for this function is we're going to say let entity equal NS entity description. So we're saying, hey, the kind of entity we're going to be creating is a clock underscore CD inside of view context, which you remember is our environment view context, okay? Um, and then we'll say, if let new clock, new underscore CD clock equal a new NS manage object as clock CD. So if, so we're, we're doing like an optional unwrap here. Um, we're optionally unwrapping this NS manage object as a clock underscore CD. So make sure that we're creating a clock underscore CD object. And if we get that far, then we're going to set its values, so color, name, ID. Um, and then we'll come here and say do, and we're going to try to save the view context, which is like saving into core data. And if it works, we'll save successfully, and then we'll run whatever completion. And if it doesn't work, then we end up here. And if we don't even get, up, if we can't even make it into this if let, aka we could not save because we had an error unwrapping the NS manage object to clock underscore CD then we won't get, we'll essentially just end up out here. We won't even get to this meet. 
And this completion here will let us run any block of code that we want after add clock is finished. So that's this right here. That's what, essentially you can pass in a whole chunk of code as a parameter. So you can, you can say, hey, uh, here is steps like X, Y, Z. And whenever you have this, steps X, Y, Z will be uh, run. Okay. And we did that. So we added the add clock function. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come here to where, where we have adding new clock. Okay. And we're going to come here and say, uh, we'll have let clock equal clock name, clock name, and color, color. We'll say add clock. The clock we're going to add is clock. And the completion now, we can actually come here and open and close like that. Why don't you get rid of this? Oh, we'll, we can keep that. We can keep that if we want. But we'll take uh, this stuff right here and we'll put it inside now. So what we're saying, I shall put it inside as well. So what we're saying is, hey, when you've successfully added the clock to core data, you can run, this is the completion, this is steps X, Y, Z that you can run right here, okay? So once you manage to do it successfully in core data, then we'll just say self.environment, you, you can add this clock over to our, our environment. And uh, prints are for us, don't forget. And then we have self.showSheet equals false, which is just hiding this add new clock view, okay? and so if we save it and run it, let's see what we get, okay? Um, we have all sorts of errors here. So let's take a look. So we, we have a, a good number of errors, and these errors are because we did a huge frame shift from the color mentality to the clock, uh, clock color mentality. So there is more to do, and we'll do it, uh, we'll keep going in the next uh, tutorial where we'll finish updating everything so we can start having persistence, okay? See you in the next one.